Say you're in California, where I live, and you want to know how susceptible your house is to a wildfire. So we put sensors, like our eyes, on satellites. We collect information, and then computers create maps. Okay, now you have a map, so you want to analyze that map. Well, you take the information about the slope. Are you on a dead-end street? Do you have a lot of fuel around your house? You put all of that information into a computer, and it can tell you how at risk you are for losing your home to a wildfire. Ever since the Babylonians etched the lay of the land on clay tablets in 2300 BC, mankind has needed accurate representations of the earth. Maps used to be made from horseback in the 1800s. They took a long time to make, so we evolved to aerial photography, and that's made a huge difference with how humans understand the earth. And showing the terrain in startling vividness. In the 60s, people began to think about the notion of encapsulating or abstracting geography in a computer. And people could look at the database in visualizations or analytics, and that was just uh, a magical idea. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God? So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. The Obama campaign took to a new level their use of technology with respect to mapping. They knew what voters to target. They knew, you know, where the marginal voter was. And frankly, the ones that use it the most effectively get elected. After 9-11, U.S. troops went into Afghanistan and they went in with Russian maps because who'd ever think you'd have to have maps of Afghanistan? Geospatial intelligence has become really the foundation for just about anything that happens in the military. It has to do with understanding in a very time-sensitive fashion things that may be developing in different parts of the world. It's an ability to enable decision makers, whether they're someone sitting in the White House or someone sitting in a foxhole. More than half the world's population now lives in urban areas. 13 of the 20 largest cities are on coastlines. So how do you model in the potential rise of sea level because of climate change? We simply could not know how the Earth works without geospatial technologies telling us where things are, how they're related, how it's put together to tell us the story of what really is happening. With a clear mandate to protect innocent life, the conflict in Darfur is over five years old now. Somewhere around 400,000 people have died. We wanted to go to the place, collect testimony, take photographs. The Sudanese government had very little interest in having us on the ground. So we purchased satellite imagery, and we saw whole villages destroyed. We took those images to the Sudanese government to let them know that people around the world were watching these villages remotely. For the insiders, the transition to digital geography has been truly revolutionary. That we can navigate our world with much greater confidence than we could have before. It's changed the science agenda, it's changed the technology, it's created new occupations. But for those outside who may not even be aware that there is a field called geospatial, it has made geography ordinary, which is the most revolutionary thing of all.